So this has happened right under our eyes and we haven't even realized it. And how it has happened is that America has used sex to destroy men. So we have to talk about what society is kind of doing right now. Because I seem to notice this in myself and many other people, especially in America. Because America doesn't have those Christian values anymore. It doesn't have any of those things that it used to have. And what really has uh, destroyed it, really has taken a hold of it and destroyed it, which we'll, we'll get into the story in, in the Bible. We're going to do something a little different today. Is they've used sex to manipulate and destroy men. And how they have done that is by pornography and by just lustful intentions of women. And how they have done that is by making women very, very sexual. And I noticed this everywhere is just that it's very hard to find just a woman that's just dressed not sexually. Like I'm, it's crazy. It's, it's really just, you know, it, it's kind of like my, not even my gender, like the one before mine is the last type of women that are, are dressing, dressing not sexually. And I see this all the time where it's basically like gym outfits that it, it's just like a, 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 a thin cloth that's tightly around everything. So you kind of see and know everything, but it's covered up. <clears throat> what we have done is, and this is especially what we'll go into the first part of it, is that this day and age, we have, we have this thing called pornography, which essentially what that is, is obviously you all know it. It's something that we all know. It's something that we all grow up with and we think that it's normal. You know, what's the funniest thing is that when you're younger, it's like, it's told that that's normal to just start, you know, beating yourself off all the time. And what we really have to understand is that puberty isn't the excuse. And this is what America makes it where it, it makes it so that you have to involve yourself sexually when you hit puberty. No, puberty is so that you are growing as a man and what we have pushed on us, which I feel really horrible for this newer generation is they have this stuff pushed on them when they're so young, like 11, 12. I remember when I first watched one of those uh, movies and it like changed my life really forever. Like I'll never forget it because it was actually not my own. It was, I didn't even know what this stuff was. And it was a, a, a one of the, at the time, my friends, it was at his house. He just decided to put it on. I had no idea what it was. And then I, you know, obviously watched it. And it just, it really changed me after that because I saw stuff that I wasn't supposed to see. And what you can see now is that we weren't supposed to just be normalized to that. And that's why everybody that's a dude is so weird because, you know, even, I mean, I guess women now even still, but more so men, it's much harder to control the lustful nature. And when you have this around you where you can just release yourself all the time, you normalize something that isn't normal. And the reason why it's not normal is because... What you have to understand when you're watching those movies is that you're not just seeing a girl. It's also a dude. You're seeing a dude as well. And you weren't supposed to see that. You weren't supposed to see the man and a woman both completely, you know, with nothing on. And this is what you have to realize. And this is why it's turning men you know, homosexual and, and trans and all that stuff because you're growing up with this stuff and you don't realize that what you're pleasuring yourself to is not just a woman. You're looking at a man as well. That's why you think that you can just start transitioning and all the other garbage that's happening because when you are doing this, you're constantly doing this to both. It's to a man and a woman. And that's why women do the same thing because they're pleasuring themselves to both a man and a woman. And this might get kicked off of YouTube. I don't know. We'll, <laughs> we'll play it by ear. We'll see what happens here. But you have to understand that you're looking at both things and you're seeing things that you should not. If you're liking this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe. And if you want some exclusive content, check out the website, www.qbalifestyle.com. Give you Bible breakdown, exclusive videos you can't find on the YouTube. I'll see you guys there. Now back to the video.
see and we're normalizing it we're normalizing not even just seeing a woman's genitalia but also a man's genitalia and everybody that's watching this you're seeing both genitalia like it's normal like it's just normal to see stuff like that every day and you go home and instead of using that testosterone that you have to go build something you then go watch this for hours and how this is destroying you is that that stuff was not supposed to happen and that's why it's so hard for men to control themselves because and and that's why you know the the homosexuality and all that stuff is becoming very relevant because as you can see this stuff is everywhere you can just go online and just find it all over the place i know when i was doing this i could find it so easily and i would be on this thing for hours wasting time and it's crazy to me because when when you get out of it when you get out of this first part it's like you don't even understand why you were doing it it's just so kind of disgusting and if you're real with yourself everyone that's watching this you know you feel disgusted afterwards. You feel disgusting after you do this stuff. And there's a reason for that because you were never meant to see that. You were never meant to do that. And this is why sex is destroying men. Because now what men are is they watch this all the time so that when they see a woman in life that they want to interact with, it's no longer a conversation trying to get to know a woman and trying to get to know if this person is a cool person or not. All you're thinking about is what she looks like naked. So you're, you're basically talking to a sex doll, which makes you extremely weird. It makes you extremely not normal. And that's why this day and age, all these things have taken off because men have been constantly watching this and it's destroying, you know, actually being a man where when you go up to a woman, it's not about having sex with her. It's about getting to know if this person is cool or not. If you enjoy being around them, if you like talking to them, they're a person, you understand? And what this society has really transformed this into, it's even women as well. This transforming each one of us talking to each other, not as a human being trying to have a conversation, but as two sex dolls trying to, you know, if, trying to bang each other. That's, that's what everybody does now. It's just basically you're not even trying to see if this person is a person. All you both are thinking about is sleeping with them. And this is what is crazy because it was never meant to be like that. And this is why we aren't able to stand in marriage anymore. Because everyone is so wired to think about sex all the time that that's what they act on. They act on that impulse instead of just understanding a human being. So we'll get into the first thing, or the first thing. We'll get into what we're actually going to talk about today. And it's going to be Judges chapter 16, Samson and Delilah. Because what we end up seeing here is what happens. And this, is, this happens all over the Bible. You know, David with Bathsheba, Solomon with his multiple wives, Gideon with, you know, the concubines, uh, Samson with Delilah, and, you know, many, many more. And you see that those people that do that with the concubines and the multiple wives and all that stuff, they end up creating people that end up destroying Israel. And what do we notice as well? Abraham, Moses, Peter, all these people that are married to one woman don't have any of this stuff. They build Israel. They build all these things. And that's what we have to understand is that what God is telling us is that we weren't supposed to be with Harlot and Jezebels. We were supposed to be with good women, good wives. And what ends up happening is, you know, we, we've we've soaked ourselves in into this sexual culture that now we're not men anymore and we don't really know what we're going for and now women are doing the same thing. So we're going to go to chapter 16. Now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. When the Gazites were told Samson has come here, they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him in the night in the gate of the city. And they were quiet all night saying in the morning, when it is daylight, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight, and then he arose at midnight. He took hold of the doors of the gate of the city, and the two gate posts pulled them up bar and all. Now, if you have to understand about Samson, is he had God giving him power. So Samson was, I think, besides David, like the most mighty man that, that was in the Bible. The most mighty man in, in history. He, he had God giving him strength to defeat the, the uh, 
the Philistines. So that's what you have to understand about Samson. So that's why he's like <laughs> pulling up, you know, everything by his by the roots and everything like that. So to them, to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Afterward, it happened that he loved the woman in the valley of Sorek, the harlot, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Entice him and find out where his great strength lies, and by means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and every one of us will give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. Now, what we're going to see here, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, I'm just going to give you the general gist and then I'll give you the ending of it, is what ends up happening is they're giving her money in order to find out what the secret behind Samson's power is. And what she ends up doing is sleeping with him, waking up, asking him what's going to happen, and, or what gives him his power. And then she invites the people to come and kill him. And what ends up happening is he keeps giving her, you know, not truth. She keep, keeps giving her things that don't really affect him. So he wakes up, kills them, you know, does his thing again. But we're going to go to verse 16. And this is where it starts getting to that point. So well, you have to understand what a bad woman's going to do. What a bad woman does to you. And this is kind of essentially a learning lesson for what a bad woman will do to you, a sexual woman. This is this is like so pertinent and this is so like relatable to our culture. What a bad woman will do to you because this girl gives it up easily, has sex with him all the time, but she's trying to destroy him by manipulating him with sex. And we're going to see something in a second. So, and it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. What does that sound like? It's a quarrelsome woman, which is a sexual woman. That he told her all his heart. And he said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God. A Nazarite is basically somebody that doesn't cut their hair, has a bunch of rules to make sure that they're a Nazarite. Doesn't drink, anything like that, but is also Christian. We should be Nazarites. <clears throat> From my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then all my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of Philistine, saying, Come up once more, for she has, he has told me his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. This is a very important part. Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for men and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. She, then she began to torment him and his strength left him. What they mean by that on her knees, I think we can all assume what she did. Well, she pleasured him. She did something sexual to him to lull him to sleep. Again, this is something that I've noticed. Um, and we'll finish this off where basically the Philistines took him, pulled out his eyes, and bound him, and took him to the prison that he had. He eventually grew his hair back. But what we have to understand is that the way that she manipulated Samson was sexually and that we're going to get into the second part and now the second part is going to be what i think once you get past which some of you have to be on the first level where you just watch pornography so much that you either think you're a homosexual or that you just can't talk to women because you're so nervous because you have stuff that you shouldn't be seeing in your head all the time and it's disgusting and you feel disgusting and you don't look at a girl as a woman you look at them like a sex doll and that's what makes you weird and that's why you keep going back to these sites because they're making you weird you can't talk to women because you're too nervous and you're too weird and then you go back to the sites well the second part is when you get kind of past that you're not that type of dude where you can get women but what you end up doing is you end up getting the sexual woman the delilahs of the world where they will slowly destroy you but they'll do it by sexually pleasing you and that is not what a woman is to a man a woman isn't just some you know pleasure missile that you just get whatever you want sexually from her of course, that's a part of it when you are married. But what a woman is, is a, a person to support a man. That's what a woman's supposed to be. And what a lot of us, I can even tell you right now that I've worked in restaurants for a long time. And I don't think I've ever really met a woman that's not like that, that's not sexual. And that's why restaurant people, they just don't stay together because it's 
the, the people that are in restaurants are so sexual. And it's not just restaurants. It's, it's a lot of places. It's, it's basically everywhere now because you see it everywhere. I mean, I go to the gym and I see girls basically wearing nothing. And I go to, I don't know, you go to the beach and you see them wearing basically nothing. And then you even go to work and a lot of the work uniforms, they're basically wearing nothing. Women have become so sexualized, and what has happened is because men are now becoming weird dweeb losers, or they're becoming player men, they now think that they have to be sexual. So now every woman is playing this sexual card where they think the epitome of a woman is one that is the best on her knees or is the one that every dude wants to sleep with. But that's what's leading to all this crap because men are dweebs and women are becoming prostitutes. And now what ends up happening is... You don't see for what it's, this is not a feminist or masculinist thing. This is just basically roles that we were both supposed to play because we're both comfortable in these roles or we should be. And this is where homosexuality and all that crap starts is because men don't want to be men anymore. Because what you had as a pride as a man is that t things were tough. But now we've had, you know, these soft dweebs take over and have made masculinity toxic and this is where the sexual girl comes in because they've made masculinity toxic where if you want a woman that wants to submit and wants to, you know, help you grow yourself as a man, as you do her, because you're both doing the same thing, but she does it in a different way like you do it in a different way. You provide, you protect, you do all those things while she nurtures, she cares, she cuddles, you know, it's like that's the roles that we were supposed to play. And now a woman like that is called weak or is called like conforming to the masculine whatever. And then a masculine man that wants to protect and provide and wants to have, you know, a submitted woman that, you know, allows him to grow and doesn't have to constantly focus on her. He's now toxic. And that's how sex has kind of destroyed us. Because now what you can, how you can be in this culture, the only weight that it seems right to be is a person that is constantly having sex, constantly giving it up to people. And I see it all the time, you know, because my whole job knows that I'm waiting for marriage. And you see the Jezebels constantly trying with me. And it's not their fault because they don't know. Because the world, especially in, you know, the younger, you know, like 21s to 25 sixes, you know, they, they don't understand. They've been taught that this is the way you're supposed to be. The one that gives the best, you know, this and the best that. That's the epitome of a woman. So they think that that's what they're supposed to do. So they hop from dude to dude to dude to dude to dude. And they don't understand what the actual problem is, is that they want to please a dude so well, but they don't know what they're actually choosing in a dude. And again, we have to go back to where, you know, the, the whole society is conformed to make sex something that's just like a handshake. It's something that we just give away. And we have to understand that this is not normal. This is not normal and we see it in the Bible over and over again. That every time sexuality comes into the picture, Jezebel, all of it, it all gets destroyed. And this is what the society is now producing in men and women is that we are so sexual now and we don't understand what it means to not be we don't understand what marriage is because marriage was a commitment to the other person not sexually soul to soul you're committing to that person sex was never supposed to be the mainstay sex was never supposed to be something that you needed to be with someone but now it is because we've made it so that's that's the only thing that you're giving away at this point. And a lot of men, and we're, we're talking specifically for men here, but it can go for a lot of women as well, is they focus their whole lives on sex where men focus their whole lives on hooking up with as many women as possible. And women focus their whole lives on how many men, how many, how many times that they can be told that they're the best at whatever instead of what the actual focus should have been on are the two people compatible and when you take away if you had this society if you took away the things that they say are normal the pornography and the one night stands and all these different things there would be no heartbreak anymore 
because heartbreak is formed because we give ourselves away as a soul tie so easily that we still have remnants of the persons that we were with before still with us and we never get rid of them we just add more on and this is why they have to have these songs and this is why if you watch my last video from last week they have to have these songs about heartbreak because heartbreak was not supposed to be a thing it was supposed to be such a minimal thing because you were supposed to find the woman you want and commit to her but now we have so many things destroying us as men that we can't even figure out the courage to go up and even talk to the woman that we might marry. So if you want to be that dude that sits there beating himself off every single day and then when he finally sees the girl that he likes, he thinks about her so much so sexually that he can't even figure out the words to go and say to her. And he just sits there going back home beating himself off to every girl that he wished he could talk to, but he can't. Because sex is the only thing that he thinks about. He doesn't understand that that person is a person just like he is. And you can go and talk to them, but you'd rather give yourself away every night to your left hand or your right instead of making the change and combating this evil. We'll turn this video off. But if you want to be that dude that understands that society is designed to make you constantly think about sex because it knows if you think about sex you can't dominate as a man you can't form your masculinity because you're too busy thinking about blowing your testosterone on nothing but you want to make that change and you see that everything around you is sexual so what you have to do is you have to run away from it shut it out and turn it off and you want to be that dude that understands that your testosterone is like a superpower and when you figure out that if you don't give it away, it keeps building and it makes you into the strong, powerful man that you want to be. And you see that it praises God with every bit of it. And you see that God has constantly showed you that a good wife, you find a virtuous wife, you find a good thing in the Lord. And he will support that because he wants you to be the godly man that you should be. We'll keep watching. That's weird. <laughs> Smells like hard work and determination, boys. Hit that like and subscribe if you like this video. I appreciate it very much. You guys got to understand the sex is trying to control men these days. And if you kind of turn it off, shut it out, block, block yourself from it, you realize that your brain actually works on other things besides sex. It works on so many different things. And then you can actually figure out how to talk to a woman you won't be nervous anymore because they're not a sex doll to you they're an actual person and you can actually talk to them without thinking of like oh, I'm, 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 you know like a dweeby person that you know we see a lot in this day and age and like i said in the beginning when you're watching that stuff you're watching a girl and a guy so you're constantly watching girl genitalia and guy genitalia and it's normal to you so you constantly have that in your head Shut that crap out so you can be the man that you need to be. Visit the website www.qbalifestyle.com. I'm sorry, guys. I'm tired. So I'm going to end this one real quick. Visit the website. Check it out. Love you all. Praise God. Love God. He is great all the time. Listen to him. He's going to tell you consistently to stop doing this. Shut it out. The only way that you can stop it is if you completely shut it out and you make that decision. So do it. Praise God. Love God. He's great all the time. Jesus Christ is Lord. He will guide you towards the truth, the light, and the way because he is. Because he's the bread of life. Amen. Peace to you all. Love you all. Peace.